All right, so today I want to do a lesson on arpeggios on the harp. Arpeggios are just when you have a certain subset of notes, so like F, A, and C, and then you play those notes one after another across most of the range of the harp. These can be quite small with only involving maybe eight notes, or they could be quite large involving up to 16 notes. I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks as to how to play and practice your arpeggios better. So the first tip that I have for arpeggios is that whenever you're crossing a hand over, you want to move that hand very quick and concisely. So you can see that when I cross over, my hand moves immediately and directly to the next placement above. Again, I'm playing an F arpeggio right now. F is easiest to play when you're learning because it incorporates both the black and the red string. So it's very easy to see where your hand is supposed to place. Each hand, the third finger and the first finger, the thumb, place on the colored strings. And then the second finger, index finger, places on the middle clear or white string. So in this case, it's very easy to see where my position is. When I'm crossing over, I cross immediately up to the next placement. And on my way there, I move directly parallel to the strings with my hand up to the next position. I don't come out away from the harp like this and then back to the position. This motion of moving away from the harp is extra motion that you don't need. Just kind of allow your hand to move directly where it needs to be. The second tip is try and place the hand before you play the next note. So this hand is going to finish by playing this C, and I'm going to have this hand placed again before I play the next note with my right hand. you to be very secure when playing your arpeggios. If it's not placed in time, you may start to panic here as you run out of time with these notes and then misplace this arpeggio and play wrong notes. The last thing that I wanna talk about here with placements, so the third thing, is when you're placing, it's very easy to start an arpeggio and just stare at the hand that's playing. Like I'm gonna look at this hand and then I'm gonna look at this hand while it's playing. Don't do that. When you start playing the arpeggio, place your hands and then immediately look at the next place you need to move. So while I'm starting the arpeggio, my eyes are staring right here. You may have noticed that my head actually moved as soon as I placed this because then I looked at the next placement that I need above that. So here, I'm staring at this placement right now my eyes change. That way you can be very, very, very secure in the arpeggios that you're playing. You're always going to be in the right place on the right strings in time. You're never going to have to fumble or accidentally place wrong notes because you just don't have enough time. Move really concisely to the next position. Don't move away from the harp like this. Concisely parallel to the strings. Place before the next finger plays. And finally, have your eyes looking at the next place you need to be, rather than looking at what you're already playing. If you've placed it, you don't need to look at it anymore. Look at something else. Now I want to talk a little bit about practicing arpeggios. The turnaround at the top of the arpeggio is significantly easier than the turnaround at the bottom of the arpeggio. turnaround at the top is very easy because when I play my second and third finger my thumb remains on the string and this bottom part of my hand likes to work together they all like to move together so when they close and then reopen it's very easy for the hand the thumb is fine being independent and these fingers like to move together this is the opposite case if we're at the bottom of an arpeggio 
we have our thumb and our index finger, or our, or in this case, if we had a four-finger arpeggio, we have the thumb, the index finger, and the middle finger with the fourth finger on the strings. So reopening these fingers together to the right place and placing is significantly harder to do quickly. For that reason, I highly recommend when you're practicing arpeggios every day, start from the top. So go top to bottom, back to top. That way you're always practicing the hard turnaround. And if you, for whatever reason, don't have time, you get distracted, you wanna work on something else, then at least you've practiced the hardest part of the arpeggio, rather than consistently practicing the top of the arpeggio, bottom to top, back down. You're practicing all the easy things in that case. Always find a way to practice the thing that is hardest the most. So in this case, if we always start at the top of the arpeggio, you're always gonna get a chance to practice the bottom of the arpeggio the most. You're gonna practice it every time you play an arpeggio. So I hope this small video was helpful with learning arpeggios and practicing arpeggios. They can be some of the scariest things in harp rep. You play a whole passage and then there's a giant, really fast arpeggio at the end of the section. Uh, one that I think of that's notorious for scaring me when I'm playing it is the arpeggio at the end of the Nutcracker cadenza. It's just really easy to have your heart going pitter-patter, pitter-patter at the end of the huge cadenza, and then you just freak out <laughs> and accidentally miss the top note of the arpeggio or something like that. So I really like to practice these very consistently, um, moving exactly where I need to, and trying to diffuse some of those nerves that you might have when performing those giant sections and pieces that are really exciting for the audience, but also really scary as a performer because the chance to play wrong notes is a lot higher than other sections of the piece. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful. Like and subscribe if you enjoy my content and I hope I'll see you in the next video.